All right, welcome guys. Today we're going to be painting this value sphere. Um, the value sphere is a great way to learn how to just jump into painting. There's a lot of uh, basic rules which is going to keep your sanity while we try to figure out how to um, get you situated in the very early stages of painting. Um, the, this is a couple that I did a long time ago. The first one, this is my second one I did. It has two closed grisaille layers on it. Closed grisaille meaning that I have a very dark value, which I mixed um, ultramarine blue and burnt umber, and it created this very nice gray. Um, and this was my third one that I did, but I only did uh, one layer on it, the first layer. So it kind of shows you the difference because you can still see the striations in this uh, in this one down here. You know, it still has that kind of stepped effect where here it, it really starts to blend more and that comes with layers so every layer we get we want to get 50 percent more accurate so uh you know three layers in your you can get a really like pretty accurate in the beginning it's not uncommon to do up to seven layers you don't have to do that on this this is just a matter of until it feels right um until it feels like it's sitting in its own environment okay so um again when i created this i used the, these two burnt umber and an ultramarine blue um, this is just the brand that I use. It's uh, good quality to the price. Um, I usually look for sales. Okay, and they created this nice gray. But we're going to create uh, with a limited palette. Um, a lot of what I teach is the limited palette from the very beginning because there are so many options and so many colors you can make. So this is kind of a neutralish, kind of purplish color by using the blue and the red of your limited palette that we'll get into. This is a CAD red, cadmium red. You can use a red light or a red medium um, and a hue. If you're beginning, you should have hues because I want you guys to be careful. Cadmium is a, it's not necessarily safe and you definitely don't want to spend too much time with it. And you should have gloves on. Um, and then ultramarine blue. Okay, so that's the red, that's the blue, and that's my titanium white here, okay? So I'm going to jump in. Um, a lot of people use palette knives that look like this. Uh, this one's pretty beat up. I don't use it a whole lot. I think someone gave it to me. Um, and I, I found that I didn't really like this too much. So instead I use, um, I use a flat one. I use a flat knife. Okay, so we're going to mix that into a neutral value. And then we're going to recreate our value sphere here. So let's get cracking on that. I'm going to put a piece of tape down here. All right, and then this is a piece of paper. I'm going to vellum over it. And let's, let's jump in. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just make kind of a nice dark value here. And we have seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The middle will be close to 50% gray. And the white will actually be more like a 3% white. 4% right. We don't want pure white. We want to learn how to really introduce pigments together so that we don't ever use pure, pure white. And you can use pure white, and I'll tell you when, but for this exercise, we want to keep it about 3 or 4%. So I am mixing my paint here. I'm going to mix more. So I just pull it, and I kind of drag it. Um, if I pull it out across the board, what I want to do is use the edge of my blade and sort of I'm not pressing very hard. I just drag it across my my uh, surface. This is a wood panel. Um, I think it's the and it's a nice wood panel. This is by New Wave, and you can use glass or you can even use a piece of acrylic. But you just need to take care of it and make sure it's cleaned. Okay, so this is now a very dark value. It looks like black on the camera. Um, if you ever want to see what it looks like. You can pull a little bit of white and a little bit of your value, and you just kind of smear them together, and that's a very cool value. So that is nowhere near, um, it's way too cool. We want to make it more warm. Okay, so I'm going to scrape this off my board and wipe it on my paper towel because I don't want it to contaminate. And I'm going to bring in um, a nice big chunk of red. Um, that's a pretty big chunk of red, but that was really blue, so I'll just bring it right in. And there's no real strategy here other than being thorough. Um, 
that's really red as you can see cadmium red is really powerful but now it's to the other side clearly it's much warmer a brown um let me tap on this so you can see it while i mix it because there's two values the camera has jumped so this is very warm now and so now i have to add more blue and we'll incorporate this And this is the whole game here, is learning how to mix your paint. Because when I go out and I'm painting, plain air outside, uh, the first thing I really want to do is to get the colors that I see accurately. And when I'm in nature, I can just take that value and hold it up to whatever I'm looking at and go, yeah, that's the right color for the tree. And that's the right color for the sky and so forth. And they always change and you have to mix them, but... That's the challenge. That's why I feel like the limited palette is a good way to do it. So let's see how this value lines up. So I'll, I'll um, pull a little bit over here, a little white, and it kind of looks like a burgundy sort of grayish. And it works pretty well. I feel like it's a, I feel like it's pretty good. Um, okay. So that's that's not bad. It's pretty warm. It's a dark value. I could add a bit more blue to it. So I think I will. I'm going to scrape this down one last time. Add a little bit more blue. And as you can see, I've used all, quite a bit of, of a, a paint to make this pile here. You'll see that the ratios are not always the same. Some paints are a lot stronger, so they require less paint. I think I had about the same amount of paint pile-wise here. And I've used a lot of blue to the red. So they're not going to be equal 50-50. Um, I don't know if you've noticed that with acrylics. But certain values, certain pigments are just much more powerful. Okay, so that looks like a really nice dark chocolate brown to me. It's warm. Um, I think if I add any more blue, let's see, I could add a little bit more. Um, I can always add red if I push it too far. And... Scrape, 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 scrape. Building up that edge here. See? That edge right there. And then just building it up. Now I have a pile and I can sort of leave it. And now I have a pile I can use. Um, I'll go over it and scrape it all up one more time. Okay, so that is going to be my dark value. So now I have to make more values all the way down. And, you know, I can kind of guess where that's going to be. One, two, three... Uh, for I have to get it in the camera too, right? So I will plan that out. Okay, so let's move this pile up one more time to there. It's a little red showing, so let's get it nice and okay. So that's good. I am not going to get a neutral gray between these two values. These two values make a purple. Um, in the limited scale, the only other in limited palette you'll learn is a yellow ochre, and yellow ochre would kind of pull it towards um, the oranges or the greens, therefore neutralizing this. But I don't want to do that right now. I just want you guys getting used to mixing these two colors. All right, and so we have a warm, very dark value. We don't use black. All right, and my, my palette's a little... Let's see if I can... My knife is pretty old, but let's see if I can clean that up a little bit. Okay, and I just wipe it on my paper towel and come back over. I'm going to take um, a little bit here and just a little bit of white. I mean, just a little bit. And the purpose here is to create steps as if I were going to make a gradation of steps all the way down. And those are pretty similar. So I can add more white to it. That's uh, too much white, I think. And you don't always know. It's kind of like watching um, taffy being made in those machines. If you've ever seen them make taffy and they pour a little color into it, it takes like a little while, at least 30 seconds to a minute, to see that full color take over that taffy mixture. That's too light. Um, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just going to go further down here. So rather than waste that pile, I will go ahead and take a little bit more of my dark. 
And let's add a little bit of white, not too much. And this is going to happen as you learn to mix colors. So I'm trying to just figure this out. So I'm going to do kind of a quick estimate of my values and then I can go back and change them. So the darkest is two. I think it needs to be darker, so I'll just add more dark to it. That feels pretty good to me. It's definitely lighter. Um, I could add a little bit more dark to it. Okay, so that's good for number two. Okay, and then to leave it in a nice usable pile, this is the practice of building up that beading edge. You can do this with both palettes, uh, palette knives, and then just sort of quickly drop it in. Now I've got a pile of paint. Looks like it came out of a tube, but it's not. It's something I mixed. So if you're looking on YouTube or wherever, looking for references and how people paint, if you see all these beautiful colors that are, it's they made, handmade it, and then this is how they did it. Okay, so one, two, this looks like it's a good three. Okay, and then let's get a little bit more dark. This will be four. So one, two, three, four. Four is going to have quite a bit of area, so I want to make quite a bit of this pile. And um, let's just start mixing it in. Now, what you're going to find is that as we're building this up, these piles are going to change. Um, I feel like it's really cool, so I could add a little bit more red into my pile here. So it's more neutral. Um, it's getting really cool in there, so let's add a little red. And a bit more white. And yes, I do it quickly, but I've been painting for a while. I could use more white in that. Um, how do you know what the right value is? Well, you kind of have to just figure it out on your own and guess. Um, if I'm looking from there, that's my darkest and that's my lightest. Is that the middle point? I feel like a little bit more white. And that's a good middle value. Yeah, I feel like that's a good. At least it's good for now, and I can continue on with my scale. Um, I do feel like I could have a bigger pile here, but I can fix that in a bit, because a lot of paint mixing in the beginning is just time spent learning how to make this gradient. Okay, so the next the next pile I'm going to create is going to be lighter. So uh, let's go back up here, and we're using less and less value here so that's good and then let's get some white and some more white and some more white uh, for the reason why I put so much white out obviously is white out on the board is because we go through a lot more white than any other value. If we use every value, every, sorry, every hue, every color, and we use white to lighten it, to demonstrate that it's being in the light, to demonstrate the form through different values and gradients, then you use a lot more white. I don't think I need that much white. Okay, so let's really make this lighter. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. And then this will be, this will be six. And it's almost all white, you know? If you're doing your math on it, divided by seven, seven times what? Um, equals 100, and I believe that's around 
Uh, 13, I guess? I don't know, let's see. Fourteen, roughly fourteen. So it's fourteen percent of a shift. So if I had ten steps, each one would be a ten percent value shift, which is a lot of things that you find in the stores. Um, you know, when you buy gradients, or you see things online. It's easy to see a grayscale shift by ten percent. Uh, so 14% is a much more um, abrupt value shift. And I feel like these three are pretty close together. It, that's a good jump, that's a good jump. I feel like that's too much of a jump. So I can go back and darken that one pretty easily. Just take a little bit of brown. Let's go right in there. And this is kind of like target practice. I mean, I've got clumps on either side and I have it spaced apart so that my knife has a little bit of room of error and I'm literally just trying to mix it without, and I put a little red in there, but I feel like it looks pretty good. It's pretty neutral. Okay, so that's good. So that's a better jump. So that's a good jump. That could be a little darker maybe. That's a good jump. That's nice now, which means that could be darker. So let's add a little bit of brown to this. Maybe a bit more than that on my look. And then, yeah, just a little bit. And this is pushing and pulling. And this will come into play all the time, all the time. Mr. B, why didn't you provide us with that grayscale? Well, because a lot of what this exercise is about, or at least as it was told to me, is about conceptualizing and getting comfortable with making gradients that otherwise don't exist. You see something out there and you have to understand how to make it, uh, this is harder. So if we do the harder stuff first, it'll be easier. And yet it'll be harder because there'll be more colors. So I want you to conceptualize because realism isn't just copy what you see. It's understanding what you're seeing, the form, the drawing, the perspective, the angles, the lights, the values, the consistent shadow parts, the terminators, uh, composition, all of it. And so to be a really good realist painter, all of that comes into play and it takes years to get really good. So if we learn it all in pieces, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, I think they call this uh, scaffolding teaching. But I don't want to completely provide all of the... I don't want to provide all of it to you. A lot of it's going to be on you to figure out how to make this stuff. I can only show you so much and then a lot of it is now feeling drawings are probably very accurate if you've been working with me so now you're gonna add color to them and you can draw them lay the vellum over and then paint okay so now this is way too whoa that's way too so now I'm just pushing and pulling talking too much so less talking but you can put a drawing underneath put vellum over it and then paint and that's a good way to learn to stay within the lines which is what we'll be doing here so we make the values, then we stay within the lines, and then the final step... Okay, I think that's good. That actually is too dark. I'm going to move that over here. I'm going to use the rest of this white. And there we go. That's my last subtle... It's not a pure white, and I'm down here, so let's... Okay, so that's good. That's pure white. That is my um, my basic white. So one, two, three, four. And I can try to make a little bit more of that value. So let's do that. Let's take a little bit more. Actually, let's move this whole thing over here. That's a good amount. And I'm going to make this value the same as that one. So let's add that amount of white. still feel like it needs I don't know, a little red ok 
Okay, so a little bit more white. This white was unused, but it's still lighter than where I'm going, so it's still good. You can save chunks if you know how to strategize a bit. And even if you don't know how to strategize a bit, you will learn through this. Okay, a little more white. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And let's mix it all together. Okay. Those are my colors. I could spend more time really getting it accurate, but I'd be happy if you guys um, could figure that out on your own. Um, that's less than 20 minutes. I could, I would expect it could take you an hour, just the first time to do that much. Um, and then you wipe it all down and you start again the next day. So I really don't want you saving paint. Um, if you get into, uh, it, after you understand the basics, you, you can save paint, but the beginning I want you to really understand the struggle of mixing and getting through it all right so let's move on to transferring this over and I'm going to uh, get my brushes Okay, um, so what I have here are a couple of different brushes, and I have a large brush. This is a large um, filbert. This is a small filbert. And this is a long filbert. Um, it's really just personal preference. I don't, you know, I got these as kind of an experiment. Um, I don't know how they're going to work on vellum, so I think, I'm, I think I'll skip on that. Um, but for now, I can use these two for today. And a lot of it is using the largest brush as possible and learning how to be accurate so you can lay down paint quickly. We do want to save time because this process can take time anyways. Um, everything that I taught you about rushing and drawing, now I want you to start slowing down. You already have uh, speed built into you, so now it's time to be accurate with it. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay down each value and blur each edge. Um, blurring makes these soft edges and the reality is is that not everything has a crisp harsh edge everything is sort of blurred and where we do decide to put a harsh edge in the the eyeball will jump to it because it's such a harsh contrast okay so i'm gonna up the light a little bit more Okay, yeah, so that's... Okay, so let's get to it. I'm going to take a little bit of black of my darkest value. It's not black, but my darkest value here. And I'm really covering both sides of the brush um, and feeling it. And here is a lot of visually seeing it because I don't actually know what I'm looking at. Um, so I'm going to carefully fill in this tile. This is just filling the, you know, stay within the lines coloring. And learning how to use the brush as a drawing tool as well as a painting tool. Now with acrylic paint, you have a little bit of amount of time, so everything's about rushing down and putting it on quickly because it dries. Even if we add a um, a drying, a slow drying agent or a retarder in there, it just tends to um, still dry too quickly. And as it's drying, it clumps, so you don't have the kind of 
the level of accuracy that you get with oil paints, in my opinion. So I can take my time and really fill that in. And that will be wet to the touch for the rest of the day, really. Um, unless I have a fan blowing on it or it's really hot. Okay, so I've brushed that down, and this is a size, it doesn't even say anymore, this feels, feels like a, it says a 10, but that can't be right, it feels like a size 8 or so, um, let me see if I have a smaller one, it's still a little bit larger than I'd like. This is a, probably a better size. These are the different filberts. This one's too big. I'm going to skip it. Um, and instead work on a, with this one here. That's a pretty good size. Right, so let's go into the next value. Now the next value is going to be very similar to the first value. And then we're just tiling it in. Um, I don't know, however you want to get it in there and get used to your brushes. Using the outside corner. Getting my corners filled in. And I mean, it's going to happen. You're going to go outside the lines, so that's okay. And with painting, there's a lot more touch than there is dragging. Now it looks like I'm dragging, but I'm really trying to... Trying to lay down these tiles. And uh, this is tiling practice. Um, tiling is the key to indirect painting. Okay, so now I've got them side by side. I'm going to clean my brush off. Um, you can actually use a smaller brush if you wanted to, but mostly what I want to do here is make sure my brush is dry. I got all of the damsel off it, and I'm going to slowly feather that edge. And I want to make sure that it's flat. There's no bead in between it. And that's the first tile. That's the first overlap. That's my first edge. I want to make sure my edges are flat. So let's go to the next, uh, not tile, next box, and then I'll tile in the box. <laughs> Right, gotta use the terminology correctly. This is a um, pretty widely accepted terminology. It's what I learned, and if you Google it, I feel like once you know terminology about a thing, you can do a lot of self-learning yourself because you can really understand, you know, the experts use similar term terminology. Most of them do, so you can. Um, Easily find more resources online. Find specific answers to what you need if there isn't a teacher available. Or it's, you know, you're not in class and you're practicing on your own. You don't have access to answers. You know the terminology. Okay, I've left this little gap in between. So again, I'm going to clean my brush off. Bringing it in the gamsol. And I'm really pressing out. I'm really pressing out. I want you to see this. I'm really trying to dry the brush. It's clean, but I want all of the solution off of it. Okay, every time I get a new color on in the beginning. Um, so now I can feather in this edge, and I'm going to build that edge up nice and close. Get it closer. 
and I actually can't feel my board at all. And now I'm going to use this other corner that was clean and just ride that ridge down. Create carefully, carefully, carefully create a nice flat edge. All right, so let's go to the next one. Next one is this value here, which is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four comes in here. And four, while I'm doing the box, will come down just a little bit. It's actually going to fill up this whole area here. But without losing focus, and because I know it's not going to dry, I want you guys to uh, just focus on the little areas at a time. And this exercise can be done really slowly, and you can get it amazing. Mostly I want you guys to touch, 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 touch. Move through it at a slower pace and learn the medium. This is not a very exciting image, so it's good to learn on night exciting images because you don't have to worry. Because there's not a lot of personal investment. That's why we have the barb plates, too. They are not necessarily exciting images. It's definitely not personal. So it's good to learn that way so we can hear objective feedback and get better. Okay, so that's done. Wipe the paint off. Clean the brush really pull out and get that excess moisture out. I'm going to feather this edge. I'm just using the corner of the brush. Mistakes are going to happen. Um, you have to learn how to fix them. You know, so if something like that happens, um, you just got to get in there and clean your brush off, get more value, and sort of pull it, push it back. You can move it around the surface, especially on the vellum. You can push it around. You can either wait for it to dry and then paint over, or you can try pushing it around. Pushing it around in the beginning can lead to frustration, and I would definitely say if you get frustrated, just let it dry, come back to it, sand the edge down, because you're going to have a ridge once it dries, and then you can just continue on with your next layer. That happens a lot actually so okay so the next one let's get the next tile in touch 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 I heard someone tell me a rule once that you really shouldn't pull more than the length of the the bristles. Some people say you shouldn't pull more than half the length of the bristles. Bristles. I'm going to say in the beginning, I just want you to touch and not drag too far. It's a general rule. Don't go farther than the length of the bristles. It's a good, it's a good guide. In the end, you're going to find where places where that rule does not apply. But in the beginning, as we learn to control the paint, um, you know, it's fun, and once you start having fun with this, you want to speed up, and then and then that's where we run into problems with oil paints. you got to be patient with this. Okay, writing this bead down. Okay, great. Gone. Nice and blurred. Um, if you want to practice that up here, too, you can flatten down the top edges. Anyways. So the next value is um, my second to lightest. And I'm trying to hide that line but not go over it. When I was um, when I was in second, third grade, I remember somebody making fun of me because I never stayed inside the lines. And I feel like that's kind of the measure of a real creative person. I don't want to stay inside the lines. I want to, you know, why should I care? And then the irony is that as you learn to paint, to draw these things that you want to do, create, now I have you inside the lines. We learn to draw inside the lines and paint side the lines carefully. But it's just an exercise. Like when you learn to ride a bike, 
you're not learning to ride a bike because you want to ride with training reels. I mean, sure, there may be, like, somebody out there who wants to do that. That's the goal of riding a bike, but not most people. I don't know what my point was. So here we go. Here's my lightest value now. And I am tiling it in. And I actually don't, again, I don't really feel the vellum underneath my brush at all. Okay, and let's ride this B down. Bring it over. That's it. So that's my that's my top gradient. All right, so let's keep going. Um, I'm going to use this small, same size brush that I've been using. And um, now I'm going to fill in the background. The thing about oil painting is that as this gray comes out into here, there are lines that it's going to touch. And anytime it touches a line, um, it needs to be immediately blended. This is the long and painful way of doing it. There are shortcuts that I'll show you later on, or maybe you'll discover online, but... Um, I feel like, once again, learning it the long and painful way is, um, quote-unquote, the right way, is, is, a good, is a good method only because it kind of teaches you the fundamentals, it teaches you the importance, so that when you get to the shortcuts and you get to the way of doing it easier, you don't forget or overlook or take for granted that it's still part of a, a bigger technique. Um, so I don't... Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna move right in. So I'm gonna grab my middle value here, loading up my brush both sides, and I'm just gonna fill it right in. And you're gonna see that I'm gonna fill it in with about a little gap. I'm gonna try and listen to my own rules. I'm not gonna pull it more than the distance on my of my um Bristles, bristles, this line, there's nothing on the other side, so I can bring it straight down, and that's good, let's get the other side, and I'll bring it to there. We have enough paint, so, you know... And um, there's a term here we've talked about with acrylic paints called pull. Uh, paints 
tend to pull. The brush wants to pull back. Like it doesn't just effortlessly glide. Um, that's just the physics of the, the paint as it's drying um, on the canvas and surfaces that aren't really smooth. Pulling um, with acrylic. With oils, um, it's more a matter of the fact that you're working with oil on a surface that does not have oil. And the pigment and everything acts as a fr friction. And the first layer, often, oftentimes when I'm painting, I don't care if the first layer looks very good. I just want to keep that first layer down. And I'm just trying to cover that painting with, um, with the first layer. Because the second layer, even on vellum, is going to be much easier. It's going to be oil on top of oil. Okay, so here comes the... Here comes the here comes the blend. So I'm gonna do I'm gonna go from dark to light, and I move my edge right up to the edge of the first box, and I can always grab more paint, and let's get it right up there. Clean my brush, dry it off very well. Get a little bit of this dark value because um, I feel like it needs to come down here in the corner just a little bit. My brushes are old and used, so they're beat up, but I, I don't mind. There's some people who really just want to have perfect, pristine brushes. Brushes wear out. They don't last forever. I couldn't give you an accurate estimate. It depends on how much you paint every day. It depends on how heavy-handed you are. Okay, so let's uh, blur that edge. Okay, and it's not perfectly straight, but I want to just get it blended and get rid of that bead. Okay, let's get the paint off the brush. Okay, cool. Nice and clean. Use a corner and feather that edge. Now, as I get close to this three-way intersection, I want to uh, make sure that I get rid of that bead accurately. So I'm working the center out. But the problem is that you create a little divot in there, so one way or another you've got to correct that divot and it's a lot of touching, it's a lot of moving things around and as things smear as you move them around it's like graphite, just like charcoal, it's going to smear when it's wet you want to uh... See, I feel like I could get this better smoother. I feel like I still see a bead, or maybe it's not even touching in some places there. There we go. Overlapped. Blend. And now I'm running into a problem I was showing you. It's starting to bleed out pretty bad. Um, let's get a little bit more of my mid-tone value because it's getting thin. And there we go. Okay, a little bit more of my mid-tone. Do my last tile. If you are older like me, parents, doing this with your kids, um, I highly recommend getting reading glasses out. Um, you may have good vision, you may have glasses or contacts, but the reading glasses are just going to magnify, and um, even for anybody really, if you can get reading glasses and help you, use tools, man. They didn't have like reading glasses way back in the day when this stuff was originally I don't think. I think they just had glasses to make you see a little bit better. Like you wore glass. I, I feel like Ben Franklin's glasses probably just helped him see things less blurry.
who knows, maybe he figured out a way to be highly accurate. I'm speculating. But, all that to say, I would use any tool you can to make sure you see this clearly, because it's this is hard enough a task and have to deal with my aging eyes. I've always had a uh, slight need for glasses. But this really makes it, this strains my eyes. And I often, if, I, if you have a window nearby, I often go to the window and look out and just kind of get my eyes to see the things in the distance. feel like it's good to exercise my eyes that way. Go out for a walk, stare at the sky. I mean, not while you're crossing an intersection, but, you know. Okay, getting thin there, add a little bit more paint. One of the complaints I see, or I've heard as the kids go, Oh, Mr. B, I've totally just, I didn't dry my brush off from the silicoil, and it just wiped out, I just had, it just took it off. Like, if I just take Gamsol, which is essentially a type of paint thinner, and I pour it on here, this will all run and just fall right off the page. So, how do I fix that? Um, the, the, the shortest and the best answer is also the most smart aleck answer. Um, don't do that. So... It's more about prevention than it is about fixing. Because you have a big mistake, you kind of have to let it dry and come back to it, sand it down. So you've been warned. Um, you can always like take your paper towel and put over it. But this isn't like watercolors or acrylics. You can't take a, a heat gun and just make it dry faster. Unfortunately, that pure turpentine will not go away as fast as water. It will go away will evaporate. For sure it will evaporate. Um, okay, that works pretty good. Let's blend that tile. I feel like if you're learning this with me and you've never painted before, this is kind of fun and soothing. If you've painted before, and now you're learning this method, it, it can be a whole lot of patience trying. Um, to, why it's such a nice thing to not have to unlearn something and have a young mind. So, to be young of mine, right, is the key. And then you'll learn it faster. You're not attached to any other way to do it. Yeah, I can hear you. Deep, Mr. B, deep. I'm so deep, man. Yeah, well, wait till you're older and... Be like, oh, wow, that wasn't deep. That was just... That. That's just that's kind of how it is. Okay, so... Done. Great for the first layer. It's done. Um, I'm going to zoom in here. On the top. Okay, this is my bad camera zooming in. So let's zoom out. So now we're going to get into this guy here. And again, I have not had my, um, this will be a good place to stop for the day. Um, if you wanted to stop for the day. Because, um, I haven't touched any of my edges. And so I don't have to worry about it. I've got a little bit here, but it's very thin. Um, but I'm going to keep going. And I'm going to jump right into the darks. So as we're, if we were just shading the rendered sphere... The value sphere, sorry, if we were just shading this with pencil or charcoal, what do we always start with? We start with the darks. And so the darkest point is going to be our darkest value, which is up here. I'll, put, I'll move some of this down so you can see where each of these values I'm looking at are. OK. 
Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So our darkest value is going to be across the terminator. And I'm going to lightly put in this belt, this band of my terminator. Also careful not to touch the outside. I don't want to do that quite yet. Um, as we do more layers, you're going to be more concerned with subtleties of the reflections and the reflected light. The light source is coming from this direction, hence the shadow drops here. The darkest areas are going to be on the sides because the reflected light doesn't hit up here. Nor does it hit way down here where you have the cast shadow touching the actual um, form shadow. Form shadow is on the form itself. Casted shadows are what are cast down. So right there is going to be another real dark area. So everything else for today, I'm going to use my second darkest value. And I'm going to mix it in on my sphere. I can always make things darker in my next layers. Um, and the reason why I don't want to just jump into dark is it can be hard to bring things back to light. Somebody once told me that. Um, so, I think, I don't know if I actually agree with that. So, I think a good way to think about it is just plan it out. If I know that's where the darkest is, everything else can be, this is pretty dark. I can always make it darker. I can push and pull in the next layers. And again, I don't want to get to, I'm not trying to get to the very, edge and I'm really trying to work with the paint that I have and smooth it out nicely there I have a nice real dark sort of blended edge Can you even see that blast that with light so from your perspective they all look the same for me it looks like a very looks like a very light very a very dark terminator and then the rest of the form, shadow, is my, is my next value down. Side by side, it's hard to tell. So let's just keep moving, and I'll go ahead, and now I'm going to do my first, my gradient. And just as we shaded painfully in class, we're going to shade painfully in oil paints. All right, you guys ready? Here we go. So... Uh, if we're going from the Terminator, the Terminator doesn't cross that line, so the next one is... Oh, also, I'm going to shift brushes down to my smaller one. I'm going to grab my my sixth value. One, two, three, four, five. Sixth darkest value. And I'm going to create this gradient. Now, keep in mind that the gradient here, it goes from light all the way to dark. Okay, and the light to dark on my first layers are going to be very light. So I'm just going to do an estimate again. And normally in a gradient, if this was my darkest and this was my lightest, 50% would be somewhere here. But because it's a going across the form, a contour across this um, sphere, it's actually going to be much lower. So the 50% mark will probably be about here. Nonetheless, let's get the f three tiles in quickly. And this is why we call it tiling. One, clean it. And uh, clean up that beaded edge. Clean my brush. Get my next value. This one. And I'll put it right on top here. It's a tile. Clean my brush up and lightly feather and dust. Smooth off that edge. Soft edges. Okay. And then the third one, sorry, that it was the third one. Now the middle value, which is our middle gray, is going to be right about here. And that's a good sort of uh, estimate 
Maybe too light. Maybe too dark. But I can fix that in the next layer. Again, I just want to get something down. My next layer will be about perfection, which will be part two of this video, and then I'll, I will be shooting it, uh, well, for me sitting here as a narrator three days from now. Um, you as a viewer, let's hit the next button, right? Okay, so let me get the, the lighter value now. I'm in my third value. And I'm going to put another band here. Another tile. Sorry, not a band. Never a band, right? You guys remember how I was so strict about my value spheres. How I wanted them perfect. Well, for those of you who were, did them well, well, it should be easier for you. For those of you who whatevered it. Actually, you know what? None of you really whatevered it. You all did a great job on this. I'm all really proud of it. I'm really proud of how those spheres turned out. Um, you know, 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, 7th and 8th graders putting out artwork that was on par with the soda classes that we saw on the walls and really what I would expect college kids to be doing. Pretty proud. Alright, so this is my second value. Second, second, and again, it's a bigger tile to there. And let's blur that edge a little bit. Soften it. These brushes I'm using are all natural fiber. Uh, in realism, natural fibers are great because you can really have a lot of... You leave a lot of brush strokes, micro level. On the other hand, it's really nice because you can get the subtle... You can really get those uh, soft edges. Um, now my second value... Is that my second value? My second value... Here. Or was that it? Yeah, that was it. It's going to come to about here. And I'm going to actually make a really large highlight. Okay. And this is my lightest value here. And that's actually going to be the highlight of my, my sphere. And I'm riding that edge. And if I make a little oval, it looks something like this. And you can mix some of your colors, some of my darks and a little bit of lights. Now I have a secondary color based off of my two primaries that I mixed up here. And I can create another tile right in there. And I'll actually blur those two with that value. That's it. That's my first gradient. It's decent. Um, I did it on the side here. Because eventually I'm going to move out on both sides. These, these stripes go up. These, these uh, gradients of tiles go up on each side. And when I get out here, guess what? It has to blur all the way around. So I'm going to move my way out. But because I actually touched it out here, touched the line, I'm going to make... Alright, so... I'll be referring to these values here and if I mix them and everything as I continue on with this. So let's get... Uh background here and I want to get right up to that line and in fact I will be I will be manually creating that bead that I don't want to have in the end and this is push and pull nothing to be nervous about Nervousness only complicates the situation. Worry does no good to nobody. So. Now I clean my brush off. And I go with... And I'm going to blur this edge. I call blur it because I guess I'm used to Photoshop.
Again, I can't feel what I'm, I'm going purely on what I see. And that's decent. Um, if I want to bring in that far edge, I can. And there you go, there's an error for you. Mistake, so I gotta more pull and more paint. Drag it down to my line. Clean my brush off. Get some of my light value. Don't be hasty to fix your mistakes, because sometimes um, you can use them, or they're not nearly as bad as you thought. Okay, so there. There's my... Um, Blended edge. So now I'm going to match this value all the way across. So let's go and just start tiling. I'm going to do the tile here. And I'm really just trying to feel that it turns. So the first few I'm going to match, and eventually I'll start feeling it. So I'm going to go all the way to the outside now. And then I get my next value. There's going to be a temptation to want to just do this full band out. Now with pencil, we use a kneaded eraser to blend in these side values. Here you just have to clean, clean your brush and blend everything as you go up. And here you want to use micro, small drags of your brush. I'm pulling a third or a quarter of the length of my bristles. Alright, so now the mid value, that was the mid value. So now my lighter value, third value, go over about here. And every, every one I do here is, it kind of looks like a band. Um, but in the end, there's going to be no bands. Uh, okay. Avoid overworking an area. It'll just go flat. Leave the mistake and move on. If it's not accurate, that's what I mean by mistake. Leave the inaccuracy and move on. It's not a mistake. Because it's all guesswork right now. Alright, let's get my next value here. My second value. Okay, good. And um, I actually have a mixture here that's in between. It's a little bit of this and a little bit of this to create a value in between it. So I'm loading my brush up with that and I'm putting it here. You can actually see that value right here. So this value would go in between here. There are my piles. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One and a half. Okay, let's move it back and I'll leave it so you can see when I dab into that a little bit of amount. Because that amount's actually pretty important. Uh, because it's so bright on the top. It really, the light just hits it and it falls all the way over. All right, so let's do another band and get my six dark value. And this one's going to go all the way to the edge. I'm going to actually bring it down just past the terminator too and clean my brush up. I'm going to soften up my shadow areas. Bring my terminator over. I'm gonna get my 50% value in the middle. Oh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put that right there. And as soon as they touch, blur it. Soften it. Again, a lot of Photoshop. <laughs> a lot I spent years doing Photoshop. So, you know, Gaussian blur, 
blur, blur more. But really, I'm just softening the edges. That's the term in painting. Okay, so let's let's actually bring that 50% value all the way around. Just that amount. Now I'm going to tile in that area. And on, as the tile goes to the edge, I will I will blur it. So that was the darkest. Now we're going to my six value, right? One, two, three, four, five. Sorry. My one, two, three, four, five, six, fifth value. So my fifth value here, fifth value right here. So I have loaded up, and I'm going to drag that right into here. And I'll bring it right to the edge. Blur it to the left, and blur it down a little bit. Clean my brush off, and I'm going to, sorry, bl soften it. And that's it. All right, next, so my, f my middle value. This is called a lost edge. Because this value here, this middle 50%, my fourth value of seven, is the same value as the outside of my sphere. And I'm actually dragging it out. And as you see that, you're like, what are you doing, Mr. B? But what happens is that this is one way amazing drawings look amazing. It's because the background and the foreground blur into each other. You get these wonderful effects. Okay, so the next one is my third value. And I've loaded my brush up with my third value, and I'm going to bring over another tile all the way to the edge. Clean my brush up, wiping off the excess paint, cleaning it, drying it. There's a blemish. I'm going to leave it though. And then blur the outside. Carefully, not moving the line. Trying not to move the line. It's going to move. Alright, then my second value goes right on top of that tile. So I clean up my brush and blend it, smooth it out, soften it. And I'm the one teaching you this terminology. I should use it, right? Alright, I'm going to go to my 1.5 value, the one that's right in between the two. And I've loaded it up. And I'm going to fill in my final towel, tile. And there we go. That's my final tile. And I'm going to slowly just blend it back up. Try. Into my final value. It's already there. Some of these areas here, like in this band here, that's kind of a harsh, like a border. So I'm going to blur it. I'm going to drag a clean brush across it a few times. Soften it. And um, I'm going to fill in this side here. But not to the corner. So let's get my sixth value. And I'm going to bring my sphere... there okay and by now I hope you're starting to see that by leaving little areas I can see where my original lines are it really helps this is great for portraiture when you've done a drawing this is great for still life when you've done a drawing this is the principle of the indirect drawing it keeps all of the process of painting uh, much slower tries to segregate all the components so that it keeps your mind focused on individual tasks. The drawing, the gradients, the shadow shapes, and then we get into the painting where you have the values 
in the right colors. Um, but first it's the values, getting the values in the right place on top of the drawing, and then eventually into color. But color is going to be later on when we work on the egg. Alright, so let me get that middle value, my fourth value. And I'm going to create... I'm, going to just, I'm actually just going to create that blur here. That beaded edge all the way to there. Right? Okay. Great. Great. So, you can see how crisp that is, I think. Can you see how crisp that is? Maybe you can, maybe you can. I can't tell, but I'm going to blur it. Clean my brush up, like constantly cleaning my brush up. If you want to see, this is my paper towel. I've already made one side dirty, so I fold it in half. I tear them in half. I don't need a whole lot at a time. And I just look for places to dry it off, and then eventually I'll just get a new piece of tape, a uh, new paper towel. Cool. That looks good. Um, I'm going to work on this section now. I'm going to bring the gradient over and bring this down. So, I'm just going to keep working. Alright, so let's go to 6. And let's pull the tile down. Next one, next value down, let's pull that tile over. So much of drawing has been about visual, what it looks like, and logically setting it up. Um, and at some point I've told all of you that painting turns back to feeling. Just like good music, I believe, is feeling too. It's less about dexterity and timing, but more about feeling it. Kind of a sixth sense. Alright, so the fifth one. Alright, let me bring that fifth one over. Bring a little bit higher over here. That's a pretty big gap. Did I forget this value here, this, this one? It's like I forgot it. So let's load it up and just ride that edge. That looks good. Okay, so let's go now to my third value. Third value tile goes here. Dry brush, clean, 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 clean. And soften, soften, soften. <laughs> Second value. Tiles get progressively less narrow and wider as you get to the top. A correlation directly to that gradient. Alright, and let's get my one and a half. Somewhere in between one and two. I need to mix more of that. It's a little bit more white. A little bit more of that, dude. We just mix. A little bit more white. Right. If you're mixing with your brush, always wipe it off before you apply it because you've built up quite a bit of paint on there. Alright, my final tile, and I'm going to slowly drag it into the white. I'm done. And let's make sure that the inside area here is clean and it works and it's nice. Looks good. Great. Next tile. Next uh, stripe of tiles. So we have um, six. Put the next tile in. 
I'm going to make mine a little bit bigger just because I want to get through this demo-wise for you guys. Okay, blurred. Uh, five. And... My stripes are, uh, my tiles are following the contours. Fifty. Middle tone number four. I have a little bit of something on there. Don't hesitate to use scissors if you need to clean up your brushes a little bit as they fall apart and get used. It's the general entropy of the brush. Blend, 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 blend. Maybe be careful that this band stays consistent. Maybe it comes up further over here. I can fix that on the next layer. Okay, let's get the third value. Goes right here. Okay, clean. So let's get the third one, and then let's get the second one. One and a half. Just drag it right up into that white. Lovely. Alright, next. I'm actually going to bring it over here, because I think I went too high on the previous stripe of tiles. Come on now. So 
Now we do the one and a half. And we'll just bring that right up into the white. On the other side, uh, I'm going to bring gray down first, a 50% gray down. And on both sides here, I'm going to do my horizon line. And I'm going to bring it uh, one value lighter. So that's my third value. I'm going to do the whole area. <laughs> Ay, wrong color. Okay, so... Okay, scrape it off. Paper towel. This is so much nicer than acrylics in that way, where I don't have to rush and get an area done.
Everything can flow way down now. So one of the ideas, principles of classical realism is that the paint is a tool, a method of describing something you're seeing. And that you really shouldn't see the brush strokes. You should be really trying to convince whatever audience is looking at this that this is real. That for a minute their eye thinks it's real. And to do that, we get rid of the strokes. That's why you don't pull a long stroke. Or if you do pull a long stroke, you need to go back over it with short strokes. And you blur edges, because life is full of blurred edges, actually. There's nothing really that... Even a very bright thing next to a dark thing visually will create this optical illusion of a glow. And you can see that parsed edges and photos and Photoshop close up. So we recreate that. And they knew that hundreds of years ago. Okay, so let's blur this edge here. It's not actually how I like to paint. And I don't, I actually like paint, looking like paint sometimes. I like Tebow. Uh, so much of the thickness in the actual paint itself. So much of modern art was about that, about the material itself. Because the camera came around and just destroyed everything that art was. And had been. Okay, so let's blur that edge. I guess in some ways you're actually building a bead and then destroying it by blurring it, smoothing it out. Okay, so that looks good. Maybe a couple more times. Make this a little bit more blurry. It's in the background, so it can have a much blurrier edge, which is a more feathered, softer edge. That takes practice. Um, it's good practice for horizon lines, the ocean, distances, hills, as they fade away into the background. Okay, so let's get the rest of this. My last tile, six. Six darkest value. And I'm actually going to bring it right up into there. I'm going to bring it down to there. You can dip it back into the dark and sweep in, gently bring back some of that Terminator edge. Not too much. I want to keep that line and I can go over it in my next layer better. And then I'll get my 30, sorry, my um, number 3 value, build that bead, 
and then break it. Soften it up. Clean my brush off and then just lightly dust it. If you feel like you're losing it, stay away from it. Frustration builds pretty quickly, or can. Or, maybe that's not true, but if you find that frustration is building up, definitely walk away from it. Okay, so let's get my next value here, which is going to be here. Okay, that's good. Let's clean my brush off. And let's blur everything. Soften everything. Talking about unlearning and relearning thing, for me, just using the word blur is unlearning. It's 25, 30 years of Photoshop. I mean, I learned it when I was in 7th grade. Photoshop 1 or 2, probably. Right, here's my other lost edge. And this lost edge is going to come up to about here. That lost edge is not really lost. It comes into this value. Clean my brush off. Let's dust that off. <laughs> Soften that. They say sometimes a good way to get over an accident is to deliberately do the accident. And then it's no longer an accident because it's deliberate. An unconscious process that's conscious. Okay, good. Clean my brush off and soften this edge. This needs to be softened well, along the edge so I can keep the shape. Alright, let's get down here. This is a bigger tile, even. Yeah, I just have this bristle poking out. The brush is falling apart. I do not like this brush. It's in. I have to get, find a, a new one. I like Trekel, Trekel, like their synthetics a lot. I'm not finding I like their natural bristles very much. Sure, if I complain, they just tell me to use their brush conditioner, which is a thing that they sell. But I don't have to do that with other brands. Okay, so the second one. It'll be right here. One and a half. Oh, I'm forgetting to soften my edges, aren't I? On the edge. Let's bring that all the way up to here. Looks pretty good. Definitely looks like bands to me, though. Soften these edges here. And soften the top a little bit. Just a little bit. Great. Let's see if I can fix this area right here. I 
something's not right here. I still feel like maybe this band should be bigger. Well, I can do more of that in a second layer. Alright, so let's get some of this very dark value. So the Terminator's in, and then we have down here the contact point between... It's another lost edge. And I'm just going to bring this right up and into my sphere. And I'm going to bring it all the way out to the edge of the shadow. And that's going to be about that much of it. And I want to get the third value to blur all of this in. And I might need a smaller brush now. And let's get this very dark value here. And that sphere, actually, I came in too high on it there. And that's going to be... The sphere comes to there. And I'm going to get the rest of the sphere in right now. I'm trying to stay in that line. Alright, and let's use that very dark. And I will fill in my rest of my shadow. Cast shadow. And I want this to be a long gradient, so I'm really gonna push it into the dark and light. Maybe I'll use just a little bit of this value here for the edge. Out on the very end. And I'll finish up Kind of a long tile with very, very soft, highly blended edges. Alright, so back to my sixth value, and I will trace around, carefully placing in my shadow. I don't want to lose the shadow, because if it even tilts a little bit on the axis, it'll feel like this thing should be rolling off the table, giving it an inherent motion. And this is supposed to be just a study, a still study. It's kind of like if you get the horizon long, horizon line long wrong on the ocean, it feels like it should be pouring off into the sea. It should be off the side of the painting. Bob Ross says, like, you need to put a bucket on the side of your painting to catch it because it feels like it should all fall off the edge. Just blur the bottom here. Soften the edges. The further away the shadow gets, the softer the edge gets. But again, you don't want to destroy it. Just got to blur all these edges in. Yeah, 
really a clean brush is kind of the key to a nice clean dry brush a little bit of patience persistence and you will get the desired results with practice okay so let's get this side Again, I can't even feel the canvas. This is based solely on look. That's why I'm not just going quick, super quick. I guess this does feel quick to a beginner. There's a bead here, so I've got to That's it. Like, that's that's kind of my lost edge. Um, I can add a little bit more of my dark value here. Just right here. Because it's going to... It is going to extend out from that contact point of where form meets cast shadow. And I can add a little bit more value here, darker. And um, some of that shadow will be reflected up into the sphere here. about it um, I can make it's good it's really good um, avoid patting myself on the back too much so that's it done um, anywhere you see that could be a softened edge. Do that before you walk away from this and then store it in a place where you can't get dust on it. The cat can't get on it. You can't accidentally knock it over. And that's my first layer. And what I like to do with my first layer is I like to use the lowercase Roman numerals. So I'm going to use this, this value here. Um, my middle one. <laughs> And this is to let me know I've done one layer on it, lowercase i. So you can see here, this is my first one. Sorry, this is my first one, and this is going to be closed grisaille. C, G, 1. My next layer, I'll put another one there. Okay, those are just notes. All right, a final picture I'll post. Um, I'm going to come back to this in a few days, and I'll do my second layer on it.